And they're living on the streets. It was a white van, I don't like it. I've seen a flying saucer. Three, two, one. Welcome back to the Lost Frequency Podcast. I'm Tom. And I'm Rye. And today we had on our first local interview uh, a person I'm acquainted with. Pretty cool guy. His name is Moises. And um, more to come after more, these messages. More, more to come after these messages. <laughs> Do you guys like uh, cereal? <laughs> I don't know. What would be our advertising there, Rye? I don't know, but you know, I used to eat cereal a lot. Yeah, you told me about this. Yeah, a lot. And. Not for my lack of wanting to eat cereal, but my my wife was uh, telling me it's not real food. Well, it's not real food, but it's delicious. It's like a cold soup. It is delicious. It, it is. Like, okay, so if you walked into a grocery store and you're like, my goal is to buy one box of, oh, dude, uh, you're gonna put me on the spot. of cereal, what would it be? Oh, man, I don't know. I don't, what's yours? Give me a second. Give me, give me fill, fill in the... Okay, well, I, I'll, I'll, I'll jump. I'll say Lucky Charms. For me, it would be it's up there. Lucky Charms. Then strangely enough, they have a leprechaun on there, and uh, which oh, is kind of like okay. a little being. It's like I, I really like Golden Grams. Oh yeah, there's yeah. there's a fantastic, and I got to go with a classic like uh, Frosted Flakes. Those are so good. I, I like Frosted Flakes were like mid level. You know, it was kind of like you had always you always had like the this the, my my parents would only allow us actually to have like shreddies or uh all oh, the corn ones. flakes like the non-sugared ones so the oh. non-sugared, even though they still had sugar with them but it was like the non-sugared ones yeah. then there was the mid-level every now and then they let us actually get uh frosted flakes because yeah. that weren't like super sugar even though it's again it's always really was. awful yeah. but we were never allowed like corn pops or lucky charms or fruity pebbles or oh i like fruity pebbles too they're good Graham. i could eat a whole box of fruity pebbles that might be my, that might be my number one i i thought it was i think i think we might have you have mentioned that before to me yeah because i could just eat literally the whole box of fruity pebbles cereal 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 so good so i was um so oh by the time this episode comes out, I'm going to say it anyway. Well, we've reached a thousand followers on our Facebook page. Thank you, each and every one. And this episode is actually, this episode is going to fall into the line of, you know, our creepy October episodes. October. Yeah. So it's going to kind of like, you know, build up to maybe to the accumul- like a cumulative of like Halloween. And maybe for Halloween, we'll release a special episode like a scary scary yeah. and trust me this one uh not to steal from uh the great San Tripoli, this one's a banger yeah uh moises brought the wood and he definitely gave us some interesting perspective yeah, it, the, the beginning i would say was terrifying and then we then we switched gears you know yeah. and not not in a bad way but we we were switched lanes maybe even like you know we went a different direction with this so we went from scary to you know ancient history so the reason i was bringing up the facebook uh followers I got a, not a friend request, but it was like suggested to me by Facebook. I got a David Icke and I, you said it might be a fake, <laughs> fake account. I kind of looked through it. It seems somewhat legit, but it's kind of hard to verify that. Yeah. Here you go. Cause you know, I brought up Alex Jones in the past. What do you think about David Icke? I, I don't know enough. Of, like I, I, I don't know enough about David Icke. I listened to some of his stuff, you know, it, again, he was like probably one of the first people, you know, telling, saying about this, you know, saying that we have reptilians among yeah. us, you know aliens among us and it is i i thought it was cool because he he was like in britain he was like a a prominent broadcaster a sports broadcaster and he yeah. said that one day god spoke to him and then changed his whole life and everyone laughed at him and he just stuck with it the dude has been like solid as a rock dude to go through all this stuff uh that he all especially back when he did it like in the mid 90s early 90s i don't quite remember when it was things like yeah early 90s yeah, and he was laughed at literally ridiculed. literally yeah and yeah. uh and we all know how that how that is or how it feels. And uh, he was like one of the first ones. At on, least, on a public stage. Yes. You know, on a public stage to, to, to take literally that. stand up and say, yeah, this is what's happening. But him saying that there's reptilians, do you think there possibly is? I do, most certainly do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. So like when he brought that up, everyone was like, what is with this nut job? And now you're like, okay, but, but David. Th- th- that's the way the world is. You know, like 
the masses will laugh at you. If you say anything that's out of line of like the mainstream narrative, mainstream media, yeah. they're going to laugh at you and point at you, you know? And, but the funny thing is, is this side, this, this, uh, I don't know, this team is growing and growing. And yes. you know what? It, it's the ones that are laughing are becoming less and less because, mm-hmm. you know, the ones that just went along with it because they wanted to be part of the crowd are finally realizing, well, you know, may, maybe there's something to this. And when you, when the, when the size starts to build up, um, it's the other group that kind of starts shifting. And, it, it, you know, yeah. do I really care about them? Not as much because no. they're like, well, I'm just going here because this is where most people are. Well, that's but- where most people are. They're followers. So yeah. whatever, you know, like um, blaze your own path. I always say to be the hero your own yeah. story. Like, don't, don't, um, don't, don't follow other people. Just do the things for yourself. Follow what's in your heart and love, you know, love yourself first and then just keep moving on. But, right, there's something important we have to bring up about this episode. Very important. So, we have started a new thing. Um, well, it, it's part of our, um, it's not new in that, it's new in one sense and not new in another. Okay. So, so we have the, the Kofi, so K-O-F-I. And you can go there, check us out, you know, give us a donation if you want. And this is all about, you know, um, buying equipment so that our podcasts, well, it's not that we're good. We are good. No. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, to make it better, we want to take it next level. We want the equipment to take it next level, you know, and we're, we're trying to procure those funds, get the money. But, you know, it's expensive. And... Yeah, because we actually wanted uh, Moises to come into the studio because he's in the same town, more town we're in. Yeah. And uh, it would be great. what studio, Tom? The studio that we're trying to build. We, we have an empty box, nothing yes. to fill it. Yeah, we want to fill it with microphones and love. <laughs> and sound dampening panels which i would that's my thing i'm like oh, sound right. dampening panels you so guys will make rise dream come true another very important thing about this episode is that it, there's an extended episode and right what is that called beyond the periphery and, ev- and how how will our listeners be able to get to that how would they reach well, that in uh, as i was mentioning the kofi um we actually have memberships so if you subscribe to one of our members membership levels you will get access to this extended beyond the periphery account so with that you get extra. You know, it's going to be 25 minutes of Moises talking a little bit further and some, um, uh, you know, very, very interesting and in-depth uh, insights insights that I've that I've never um, pondered before. And, you know, you know, guys, me and Ryan are very open people. It's just something that has never come across my plate or field of view. And, uh, and, yeah, and you so, know what, though? Yeah, do that. With with that extra money, you're not going to hear the dogs anymore. You know, we'll have to say goodbye to these dogs because when we're down in our studio, It'll be a lot. But if you quieter. want to, I could bring one in the studio. Yeah, yeah, we could do that. We yeah. could just bark. Maybe not the sound of dogs, <laughs> but the smell. We can bark too. Yes. 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 So, uh, like always, guys, we we appreciate everything you've been doing. Uh, the Facebook page, you guys have been blowing it up. Uh, a lot of interaction. It's uh, it's hopping. Uh, yeah, the frequent knots uh, uh, unveiled. That's going to be. I'm sure by the time you hear well, this, the, this, that's going to be up. We already have some episodes. We have a lot of things. Notes. Yeah, we have a lot of things coming up. Uh, keep sending those stories at the Lost Frequency Podcast at gmail.com. Or, you know, like always, to connect with me privately on Facebook at Tom Franklin or Rye Voss on Facebook. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, we have our TikTok channel. We have our YouTube channel. YouTube channel is starting to take off really well. And with this Frequent Ops Unveiled as well, it's going to go even bigger. So the sooner you guys get in and be part of the Frequent Ops team, the better. So you can take advantage of everything we're offering. And remember, you're listening to the Lost Frequency Podcast, where we bring the periphery into focus. So here we are again on the Lost Frequency Podcast, and today we have uh, Moises. And uh, Moises, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, and um, let's get into some things that you were telling me. Oh, hi there. Uh, my name is Moises. I'm uh, 32 years old. I'm living now in Campeche. Here's where I met uh, Tom, uh, I think a few months ago. Yeah. And uh, we've been talking about some different topics and and there uh, we start talking about (laughs) some very interesting stuff and um, yeah we were were drinking right we were drinking alcohol we were drinking that day (laughs) that is important for you to know (laughs) (laughs) we were drinking but that doesn't mean that everything i said wasn't real (laughs) (laughs) 
So it, 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 uh, it, it just loose it loosened you up so you'd be more freer about talking about this. Uh, well, you know, it's not like I I've told this to a lot of people. Um, it it doesn't happen like that far. So it's um. I mean, it's just a few persons that that heard about that, and well, I'm gonna tell you yeah. today about it. Yeah, yeah, yes. You started Let's... to tell me, but I said, wait, wait, wait. This sounds incredible. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So uh, we talk about s some different stuff, but I was telling this story about one dream that I had that I had a few months ago. It was like the first weeks or the first days that I uh, that I get to uh, to sleep into my girlfriend's house, and <clears throat> I I actually think it was like the first week. Interesting thing, uh, her roomie, you know about her? <laughs> yes, I do. Um, she used to say that she felt something weird about the house and there was some weird stuff like a lot of box and cockroaches and um some um like scorpions under the bed and she found some photograph under the bed and uh, there was like some candles in the living room uh, you can see that they were used before, and when we talked to the uh, to the uh, to the owner, she told us that she doesn't know a lot about who lived there before, but she seems to know something about I know I don't know something like some kind of witchcraft or something like that. So uh, nothing happened to us before, so. We didn't pay much attention to that. <clears throat> she was the only one like struggling with little stuff over. But that day, uh, actually that night, we get to bed, we go to sleep, and I think it, it was like like three, four in the morning. If if I speak uh, like too fast or or I, or my English is not too good, you can tell me and I can repeat. No, it's great. You're doing great, Moise. No, you're doing fantastic. You're doing fantastic. We're saying like three or around three in the morning is like you know we always dub that the witching hour. Yeah. I know. The I know. De la bruja. I I know, and and I mean it, everything because you know everything's everyone said like this is I, I don't know exactly how you say it in English, but it's like in Spanish it's cuando se te sube el muerto. Like this thing when you kind of wake up, but you can't move and 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 you can't breathe. And I don't know how you say it in English. You we call that uh, sleep paralysis. Sleep okay, paralysis, well, yeah. uh, okay, a sleep paralysis. So this happened to me before, but I mean it. It wasn't like that scary, you know. I just it was a few minutes and and that's it. This time. Uh, the few people I talk about uh, about this, they told me like uh, it happened again, sleep paralysis. But here comes the interesting part. In my dream, <clears throat> I was sleeping in this room. Uh, I I couldn't see everyone's face because they were all like lay down in in different beds. I just know that. One of my brothers was on my left side, and there was other people sleeping too. And I could hear my mother and my older brother, like talking to each other, but loud. Like if they were, if like if they were uh, in different rooms, so they were like screaming one to the other. But they were having a conversation. I don't really remember about what. So I was laying uh, like this uh, over uh, over the um, the wall, and in front of me, over the wall, there was like a big window. But I, uh, um, not I mean it, not that big. It was like long, but not that not that big, you know. 
So skinny. So a so, long and okay. skinny. Uh, That's window. right. And I was here in this conversation. I, I was awake in my dream, obviously. I was here in this conversation. I could hear my mother screaming and I could hear my brother screaming. And then I was looking to this window <clears throat> and this thing starts coming in through the window i could see something like like uh, i only could explain it like his like its leg like the leg get in first then like the the left arm and and he was getting in like from behind then it was the the right uh leg and then the right arm and at the end he got his face in but I was seeing like like it's back. At the moment that this thing um, come in like completely, I could hear that this thing was talking like my brother. So this conversation between my mother and my brother, it was not my brother. It was this thing speaking like my brother, his voice and everything. Whoa. So this thing gets in and then like slowly tries to uh cuz you know it was like the bathroom and there were there were beds this side I mean my side and it was like uh like beds on the other side and just a small hole in the middle so this thing it was very tall Actually, it was like crawling because because it couldn't stand like like I mean it was it, there was a roof so uh, that's right and it got like long arms as long as he was like walking like a gorilla he was putting his arms on the on the floor and long legs it kind of looked like a spider but without all the all the legs and there was this head long head with long white eyes like no uh, uh pupils pupils uh, yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah, just pupils. just white only white and this like very creepy mouth i i i couldn't even explain exactly how it was but it was trying not to make noise or to wake up anybody he was being very careful and when he starts <clears throat> walking in front of me he's it, this thing still talking with my with my mother uh, pretending to be my brother and when it was in front of me <clears throat> and here here comes the the interesting part about this I pointed I pointed it and I told I I um I uh tried to to um oh, okay I missed it for a second I I just wanted to know what or or who was it so I pointed at it and I said who are you and this thing turned to me like like in front of me and there started like this kind of dream paralysis because he extended his hand to my to me and i could remember i said who are you and then he put his hand like here whoa and i like couldn't talk anymore into my mouth and i couldn't talk anymore Okay, well, and, just to clarify, this is a dream, or this is between the dream and waking up, or what was what, or, or was it you were awake? That's that's where I'm going now. Oh, okay. It, I, I I still because <laughs> uh, in this moment I still uh, dreaming. I think he puts one hand on my mouth, and then the other one, and I feel I felt like kind of trying to get inside of me through my mouth. That's what I felt at that moment. And in that exact moment, 
I started like trying to scream into my dream, but with no sound, obviously. And this is the moment when uh, my girlfriend, she said, I, I obviously don't remember that part because I couldn't see myself, but she said that I kind of stand up and I was eyes open and, and mouth open trying to scream. Like trying to scream, but I couldn't make any sound. I couldn't move. And okay, I have a question. So okay, at go. this point, when you say your girlfriend saw you, okay, like she she was awake. She saw you actually st- sitting up and trying to scream in real in, in in waking life. She woke up when I uh like suddenly moved like that. So she woke up. And and she saw me like 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 I don't know I I could I just can't imagine like something like 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 this. And she and this is the part when I actually could see both scenes. I keep seeing my dream, this thing getting my mouth like this, and at the same time I was seeing my girlfriend over me like shaking me and crying because she was scared and i was seeing both things at the same time so i couldn't so i couldn't i I didn't know what was going on i couldn't scream i couldn't move but i still seeing the dream and this thing coming to me and at the same time my girlfriend like moving me and 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 everything and i don't know i mean it was obviously uh, uh, maybe some seconds okay so you were so you were like in both worlds at the same time you were in like this dream world and and waking as i call it waking life you were you had a foot in each realm we'll say you know a foot in the the waking life and a foot in your dream world and they were crossing over like there was definite a crossover and you were like the the the, the bridge crossing them over it sounds like it cuz i i it was difficult, you know, in that moment to know where I was, but I got this picture very clear of of seeing both uh, both scenes, both scenes at the same time, and uh, maybe I don't know a minute, I don't know, but a, a, a minute like is a, a minute is a long time in this type of situation. <laughs> yeah, it really seems. I, I yeah, please please go on, and I have some questions for after, but please like fin- okay. finish this. Yeah. Yes, this is amazing. Well, at, at this at this time, it was like like kind of the end because I it, ha- it I know I don't know exactly what what time <clears throat> uh, this take, but I suddenly wake up. I mean, I start or I stopped seeing the dream, and I went full into waking up, and I was uh, I was scared as hell and and you know my heart like <laughs> and my girlfriend was actually like um crying and very scared too and and all like that so um and and that was it i mean i i i i i stand up i i went to take some water i was trying to to think about everything that happens and, and then I start like talking to my girlfriend. And I told told her uh, what I see and blah blah blah. But it took me like a while to 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 really understand what was going on. Uh, yeah, so, like to like comprehend exactly what has just transpired, what just happened. Exactly. And and about that story, that's like like about it. Obviously, at uh, the next day, I was. Like um, now, I believed <laughs> that that some something was happening there, and and well, it ha- it passed like maybe a couple of weeks, and we moved from there. And oh wow, been... that was recently then. That was very recent. Oh uh, yeah, it was like two weeks before we get. I mean, it was like one like one week before I met you. No kidding, no yep. kidding. And then I, and then a, my big, tall, slender butt probably came into the house, and you were like, "Here he is again." <laughs> probably, I saw you through the window, and I said, "Damn, he came from me." 
I, I de- Moses, I definitely have some questions. Um, now, it, like, I know you gave us a bit of a description of this creature. What, what about its skin? Like, what did it actually, its body look like? Like, if you're able to describe it, like, did you have a skin color, you know, maybe? And you said it was tall. So we're thinking maybe like seven feet tall or something like uh, that. Meters, meters. Or, or meters, hang on. So we'll like say two and a half, half meters. meters. Yeah. I, I think maybe more. Wow. And and I don't remember like like actually skin de- details, but I, I mean now that you mentioned like this uh, like the Slenderman, it was kind of because it was it was not like like the suit. I I wouldn't think I wouldn't think Slenderman. Actually, I would think more like Rake. Um, there's a creature called the Rake which is like this being kind of exactly like you're describing no clothes though. And it usually has like a leathery, leathery skin, you know, sometimes maybe like a pale skin. Um, and, it was and, like, like gray. It was like gray color. Yes. And, and when they, when they the talk smile. like this big, huge mouthful of teeth kind of thing, this is what comes to mind. I've heard another story and, and I'm not sure if it was referenced as a rake, but it almost identical to this story. I got a, I, I listened to it in another podcast. I have to find it now. Like when you're describing this creature with this big mouth, this grin with his teeth, I've heard this before too. So, which is, which is terrifying. You know, I don't want to confirm that for you that, you know, other people have seen this, but sometimes you can take solace to know that it has happened before, but you can also be like, crap, man, it has happened before. And well, uh, I mean, uh, the next day, I remembered, well, I don't remember now, but I remembered I saw a movie where there was some kind of creatures with some, like, white eyes. And I tried to, like, explain myself, and I said, oh, well, maybe. But I, I really I really don't think so. I, I mean, this this thing that happened when I was seeing, like, like both things at the same time, and... The thing that that gets my attention the most is that um, I started not speaking and trying to scream the minute this thing touches my mouth. Yeah. And this feeling that I get, because it it wasn't just like like shut up, you know. It was like he it turns the attention to me. And I totally felt like it was trying to get into me. So, so I, at the beginning, I was like, oh, maybe the movie, maybe the eyes, maybe the creature, maybe. But uh, I, I really don't think so. So, I mean, I, I can't really say what was that, but uh, there, uh, I mean, definitely was not normal. <laughs> Is there is there a skinny? I don't remember. The, is there a skinny window in the room too, or it was just in the dream? No, there actually there was no window in the room. I I got like this. Okay, box. so that that was just in the that, dream. That was just in the dream, and he stepped through. Or or maybe I mean, because over my over over my head there was this like solar ah uh, that skylights, but. I mean, and the sun was like, like, like in front of me at five o'clock, but it was three in the morning, so there was no light there. I mean, it maybe could be like, like the image of 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 the window, but I, I don't know. I, I have a, I do have one more question about this. How did you feel the next day? If you're saying this creature is trying to get inside of you, you know, did you? Were you feeling sick at all? Like, I'm, I'm really curious. Like, if, if this was trying to put its hands in, like, did you feel any nauseous or like, like when you're gonna get sick, or you know, or the next day, did you feel kind of like awesome. no much energy or anything like that? Uh well, and actually, actually, no. Uh, I, I talked a little bit with with uh, with Tom about this. Um, I had. Another thing that happened before that, I can like like told you very quickly, very briefly. Uh, I was in in Merida, Yucatan before, and <laughs> and I was like in this uh, lecture club, 
and we read about about uh, universal laws and 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 energy and and um, some stuff like that. The people with me in this uh, like lecture club, uh, w most of them were like in 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 physical therapy or or chiropractor and um, some stuff like that. But they all got like another line where they were into um, Mexican uh, medicine, like traditional medicine, and and some shaman and a witch. I mean, she called herself like a white witch, but a, a witch. And they always speak about all this kind of stuff, energy and 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 and, and good and evil and and all this things and there was one time where they make like this i i couldn't i don't know if it has a name but all of us was going to uh give the others like some of our knowledge and at that moment the only thing that i could provide was massage i was starting with massage so uh okay i was giving some massage and everything but before i I mean, I got there late, and before I got there, they started making protections. They made protections into the house. They made protections to everyone there, and I, I didn't reach my protection. And this was because they were, they were going to read the cards, and they were going to make some other stuff in there. So I just get there. They told me, oh, we finished with the protections, but I... At that moment, I couldn't care less. So, okay, let's go. At the end, uh, uh, some uh, woman read the cards to me and, okay, thank you very much. And that's it. It was, how do you say it? Um, like eclipse? It was an eclipse, an like eclipse? A, a, a lunar okay. eclipse but, or but solar it's eclipse. But exactly, it's not exactly a, a, an eclipse. It's... This thing that happens in in Chichen Itza. Oh, um, oh, the oh, the, 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 the solstice, the, the solstice, solstice uh, the ah, the spring, the spring was... equinox, the spring equinox, the, spring no, the equinox. fall equinox, the fall equinox, and the spring. Um, the solstice, solstice. Is, yeah, it's solstice. solstice. I thought the solstice was the summer, the summer okay. solstice, no, right. the and the winter day, solstice, right. but the spring is not equinox. I think it's equinox. Yeah, the fall equinox. and spring equinox. Okay. Yeah. So it was a very powerful night uh energy speaking and well this thing ends and i went home and that night uh i was i couldn't sleep i was like rolling in my bed and rolling and rolling rolling for about three four hours wow and i actually got mad but all this time I, I love sleeping with with uh, air conditioner like the the colder the, the the best you know but this time I was like with the whole shit over over my whole body mm -hmm. and I was rolling down the shit I couldn't see anything I was all the time because I was really trying to sleep I was tired it was late we come again it was like three o'clock three in the morning so i was like like mad that i couldn't sleep and i i i said well i'm going to i'm going to stand up i'm going to the bathroom i'm going to get some water and i'm going to uh come to bed again and i need to 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 get some sleep and when i get the sheets down imagine that um just where my feet where my feet end in the in the bed there was this black figure sitting into my bed and i was looking at his back and his and the back of his head and all like the like the back of this black figure no no clothes no nothing it was like a shadow i saw it and I just, it was like, no, thank you, but no, I just got my shits back, <laughs> and I cover up again, 
and I was like, like no, 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 no. And incredibly, I fall asleep like, I don't know, some minutes after. So here comes why I, I'm telling you this. I come to see, uh, actually, it's my, my, my aunt, this witch, uh, white witch is my aunt. And I come with her and, and tell, tell her about it. And she told me, well, it, it was the energy. Maybe you got something into um, into the card reading and you were not protected because you were late and blah, 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 blah. And she told me something uh, that, that I remembered after this dream. And it is that all this kind of stuff, it doesn't matter how good or bad it, they are. It's energy at the end. And this thing that uh, it matters how much or how important it is to you. So that depends how, if, how much effect they got on you. Right. It's real. So in, in this uh, shadow thing, she told me like, like it's okay, don't, don't worry. It sometimes happened. The only thing, or, or the only advice that she gave me is what it was. It was like, like don't try to confront it, or to fight it, or to speak to it. Just ignore it. You know, just go to bed, go to sleep. Maybe if they are trying to do something, they are actually trying for you to react so they can, like, do whatever they are into. No. So I remember this thing after my dream and it I was like like I couldn't give it that importance you know because I didn't know what was happened or what could happen but I knew that I wasn't going to make it that big deal you know it happens I'm okay everything is okay I'm feeling great, so that was it, and it didn't happen again. So, well, <laughs> that was it. So, so describing this uh, black figure at the foot of your bed, you said its back was face to you. How do you? Uh, what did? How did you know it was its back? I guess is the best way to say that. Uh, the only way that I can explain it is because you know maybe I. It was it was actually a, a, like a human figure, and the only way that I could represent it, it was like sitting on the bed, and and gotcha. the the legs were like to the right. floor. Right. So I so I um I understand it like he was looking to the window in front and giving me the back. Interesting. And this happened in the same house, or is this before? No, no, it was different oh, okay. house. It, it, it were different houses. That was in Merida. Oh, that was in Merida. Oh. That was in Merida. And, 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 you know, there was this explanation that when you go to, uh, to real card lecture, uh, not with, like, the ones you get, like, in the corner, but the real ones, they actually um, – do stuff and move some energy and use some spirits and 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 this kind of stuff. And if you are not and protected enough, um, you can well you can keep something. Oh, actually, these people because the the people that read the cards they actually most of them believe like in God. So. They give, they give, they give you the blessing after you leave. I mean, before you leave. And the uh, like, like the recommendation is for you to pray after that, because there is like this window that you open for uh, a couple hours where you get like susceptible for all this kind of stuff. So you you need to be protected before and after. And it seems like this was the explanation of what happened that day. I wasn't protected, so something happened, and 
Uh, that's it. As we would call an attachment. So you you got an attachment that followed you home pretty much is what happened. Uh, kind of, yeah. Yeah, that you picked up who knows where. You know, you might have picked it up in with this group or you might have picked it up on your way home or you might have picked it up um, at the local taco stand, you know. Or, uh, the- yeah, or, or it, it actually could be home. But like this window, this energy made me like, like, like get this uh, to see it or something. No, as you said, it could be like anywhere. So, uh, so, so this window, what you're saying also is not necessarily an attachment, but it's kind of like you can see past the veil, maybe perhaps like as we would say, you know, you could maybe see the other side. Maybe this, this was a being that used to live in this home. And maybe you can maybe see him sitting there at your bed, looking out the window. Maybe, maybe he would have done that every night. Interesting. And, and you know, and you know, it was like, um, as I told you before, I couldn't really like, like explain the way that I that I saw this figure. But if I paid attention to the remember, uh, I mean, to the pic- to the picture I got of that moment. I could see like this uh, bald person just sitting there. Wow. And it kind of remembered me to my my grandfather that died there in, in home. Oh. So uh, maybe the explanation goes that way, you know? Maybe yeah. it was there and this window that I opened let me see it that day and i don't know that's very but, possible man that's a very interesting explanation um you so the, these group of people i think you said it was your aunt who proclaims herself to be a white witch or says she's a white witch. yes she is um is this we've i mean i've been here for less than two years and, and i've been hearing some things about these type of things in the mexican culture is there any like insight you could give us to like it, these type of w- would that be called like the curandero uh, or uh, is that a uh, curandera would that be associated with that or is it not is it like a like a bruja blanca or something like that well you know this is like a very very big uh, uh like a very big issue you know because here in 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 mexico we got like like mixed cultures there was the Mayan and the Aztecs and and Olmex. even <laughs> after the the uh, after Spain came and all of that, there's still some uh, uh, mixed cultures that still get in a little bit of of what happened before that. So the issue here is, uh, it's more like a shaman. Okay, but the thing is that if you go back to every or mostly every ancient culture you can see this uh assemblant or assemblant of all of of them using this kind of of what they call magic some uh, you know for example over uh this this example on my aunt she she called herself a shaman they actually go to a process. She she went to a process that ended in the woods. Obviously, she didn't tell me everything that happened. There are some stuff that they need to keep to themselves. But the, the thing over that it was that they left them in the woods alone three days to find their animal spirit. Interesting. She found it. Oh, I don't remember. I think it was a wolf or something like that. And well, the 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 thing is that she works with um with plants mostly. She makes medicine and and something like that. But is what I was trying to tell you. If you go back, <clears throat> I mean to as far as most of us can go uh and, and obviously speaking to to the to um to our civilization uh you can go back to the egyptians for example and 
there's some um some information about the Egyptian culture that said they w they came or their knowledge came from the last Atlanteans survivors. That's how they get all the all this information they that they get that we now can't understand how they do everything they do. So they used or they learned to use the power of the mind. And if you go to the actual translation of some words that we know now, like magic or or weak or, or weak, uh, I'm trying to uh, to talk about the witches or all of these words. Yeah, Wicca. Wiccan, Wiccan. Yeah. All of these words go back to to energy. So they learn to use the energy around that is everywhere and use it. Now we obviously know it can be used because the, I mean the this energy and the magic actually that we know it as magic, it is not good or bad. We use it for good or for bad. But the energy we yeah, the we, we use and that's that's correct. The intention is the important thing. So the Mayans use the same thing. They, they use this energy and the intention. Every civilization, ancient civilization, use the intention to everything they do. And now we can go back to the to to over here in Mexico, the Mayans, for example. Um, we can see it now in the information that, for example, my aunt got, and we can go back to the little information that we can get from the Mayans, because most of it got burned or Spanish people got it, or I don't know, but we got the very little information about them. What we know is that they use this, uh, this energy and the intention to do everything that they did. For example, uh, there's these um, beings called the Alushes over here. Yes. Yes. And there's a difference. Let's let's get it clear from the beginning. There's a difference between, like, um, like the wood beings, like a fairy or or this. I I couldn't really know how to to talk about them, but there's like magical things that live in the woods. Elementals, maybe. Maybe elementals, but they are like nature created, you know. And then there are because when you talk to someone over here about the Lucia, they told you that they are things that live in the woods and and natural things and 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 all of this, but they are not. The Mayans use the energy and the intention for a lot of stuff. Mostly for everything. That's why they could um, get, uh, I mean, the corn and, and, and the sun and the water and everything that they do. But in this case, for example, the Alushes are a very interesting thing because, I mean, now I got my like my home, you know. And 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 uh, they get from clay and made these figures from clay, and they spend nine nights feeding them with uh, corn and some flowers and blood, and every night they intention this thing for the purpose they want to give mostly it was to protect uh well their their homes i don't know if it was like a, like a limited terrain or something but their homes and their families so they spend nine nights to give the intention to these creatures and they just came to life after that so the thing is 
these creatures or these well, I don't know whatever you want to call them they came to life being this energy and um, obviously the energy I mean it doesn't die it has no ending you know so if I don't know how many years ago some magian made three illusions to protect his family and well then things happen and they are all dead and this uh, home no longer exists now maybe there is I don't know a driveway or, or a mall or, or another home or something but this energy is still alive the difference is that they got no purpose now because there's no one to protect there's nothing to take care of so they are now begging over there so that's why you find them and people said that they throw uh, rocks to you and they hide things from you and they scared you in the woods and something like that but they are just like doing its job you know what they were created for are they are, are moises are they considered to be malicious uh, malicious like uh what would be a good word synonym well, for malicious like malicious. Means? mean or like uh that they can hurt you they are considered to be something to to be careful of because okay as their way intended to protect if they feel you are there to do some harm they are going to uh protect you know i, I we don't know i mean there are people Older people, for example, my uh, grand grandmother was like the closer of a Mayan that I could that I could uh, know. She was from Yucatan, actually, and they got stories of people lost in the woods, and they said, "Well, he got into Alusha's territory, and and they just got lost. I mean, the Alusha lost him, you you know." There's nothing like like exact about that information. There's no one that could say that that actually really happened or what really happened to these people that got lost suddenly. But the thing that it's real is that they are intent to protect. So if you get in there trying to hurt them or the area that they are leaving, they are going to respond in some way. That's why... The 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 thing that you uh, that you hear the most is that I was walking like in the woods or 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 walking in in the in the roadway or something like that and and they started throwing like rocks to me trying to me to get away you know. Okay, so, so I have a I Moses, I have a question here. So perhaps you take over the land. And I'm actually asking this for Tom. This is for me. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you take over the land. And you believe there's a Lucius on the land that we're protecting it prior. Okay. What would you, what would be the process you would do to like, I guess you wouldn't want, in my opinion, you wouldn't want to drive them off because this is the, where they belong. How do you like, kind of like appease them or, or maybe, you know, let them know that you mean them no harm and you want to cohabitate with them or live with them? Actually, that's exactly what you, what, what it, you are supposed to do. Cause as they were intended to, uh, to, uh, fulfill, a, um, a purpose, an intention, mm -hmm. a purpose, you need to thank them for the job they have done till now and just it's it's something like this you know like um i know you're trying to do your job i know you were made for this i really appreciate it thank you for your job or your service but your master is no longer here you got no job here you got nothing uh that keeps you here so you can just go back in peace or something like that and I mean, I can tell you again, there's nothing that there's no one that can tell me they've done, they've done that and <laughs> they just go away. But in general information, if you are dealing with 
any kind of energy that was intended to do something, but they still do it like without someone guiding it, the thing you need to do is to, to thank them for the job or their service and tell them there's no purpose for them in here and they can just go back to whatever they came from. Wow. And that's it. You, you know, this is yeah. like, it, it really reminds me of like magic of old of, you know, like that was passed down from, and, and what you're saying from Atlantis, and I totally believe that, like Atlanteans um, were an advanced civilization, but it was a different type of technology. We almost say technology, but they had a different grasp of the world. They were able that's to, right. they kind of deviated, went one way, whereas us, we're kind of like these techno, we're, we're, we're techno kind of thing. But when you're talking about Alusha's and, and you're like putting intention, which is like energy, right? And then you're doing, you know, you're giving them life, but you're also giving them programming. It's almost like you're creating a robot uh, in essence, you know, like a protection. Uh, you're, you're programming uh -huh. something to protect you. It, 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 it seems very similar to that. And this robot has like an infinite lifespan. And once you pass on, it just keeps wanting to do follow the same programming that it had from the beginning. It's very interesting. Yes, it is actually, and and the the thing that I was trying to explain is that that is the base to most or to mostly every kind of magic that exists. You know, there is I can't remember the name now, but there is um they were not called witches. They she was called um um it was. Okay, maybe I'll tell you uh, in a few minutes. Yeah, no worries. But there, there, there was this woman that learned to to use the energy, and she said this: the energy that we're using is everything here and in space. You know what we see, like space, like emptiness, is actually something that you can't see with your eyes, but there is something up there. And is this energy all over the universe? You know? Yes, makes sense. And that's the basis, like from the beginning of life. So, this woman said that if you can learn to use it, you can do everything with that. But she was most uh, most intended to to physical things. So. When you study about this woman, she had she got like like some books and and some information that she wrote. She said that she wrote all that books and information with the same carbon pencil that she created and renovated every every time she wanted to. Whoa, that's interesting. Because she learned how to get this energy and just uh make it physical oh wow i, I have a question okay so i am possibly out because uh, you know that I, I have uh i have some property close by uh the city about a half hour away and i am kind of experiencing whispers in my ear one night and i've had a rock thrown at me okay what would be your suggestion to help me which would, would should i go find a mayan medicine person or a shaman or what would you suggest i do Okay, well, there, uh, there are a lot of things that you can do, but the import I mean, actually, you can do it yourself. Okay. Because there, this, there, there, this is the the important thing about what I was talking about. Everything is about this energy, the use of the energy, and the intention that you put into everything you do, and this goes into every act in the day. Like these people live from intention you know you wake up and the first thing you do when you open your eyes is to thank uh i don't know if you believe in god or life or universe thank you for this day because it's already a good day you know and the f the first uh glass of water you get before you get it you intend it this water is going to clean me from the inside and give me the energy that I need to uh, to go across this day and to drink your water. And you go to the shower 
and you intend the water that is falling in front of i mean upon you you know like this water is going to clean my body and clean my energy and gonna give me the energy that i need to go through this day and all you do across the day you intend every action you do so going back to what you say you can go out and with a lot of intention you can try to do what i what i uh, was saying a few moments ago you know I, i don't know what you are i don't know what you want but i can assure you i'm not here to do harm uh maybe i get into your territory but i uh, i know i know i apologize apologize about that i need to do this for a living so i ask for your permission to keep going and i thank you for your service you can stay here we can like live all together and blah 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 blah, blah. Sure. you can try it with like i mean like with a lot of intention but that's the hard part about this okay these people obviously got yourself meditation and information and 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 process and studies and a lot of things to get their intention power that powerful you know so well at the end maybe so, yeah yeah I, i've uh i've already actually done that because I, i i after hearing that and telling rai about it and i think i talked to you uh, yep. at the at the party we were at and uh, you were just telling me it's about your intention And um, so I went up on the on the mountain there, and I just was up there working with the machete. So I'm clearing okay. to put some stuff in, and I just said I'm not here to harm the land. I'm not here to uh, hurt you guys in any way. Um, I know what you're here to do. I just, um, you know, I'm I don't want to. I actually want to improve the land and make the land better, and uh, just you know, don't harm me or my family. And um, it seemed to be um, since then it seems to be a little quieter. Okay. To be honest with you, there's a, there's a funny story about Alusius actually. For example, uh, there's this story over uh, Cancun driveway. There was this bridge. Oh yes, you yes. know about it. Yes. Okay. There is yes, this I've bridge. This. There is this bridge that they built like 15 years ago or something like that. Yeah, going towards uh, Playa de Carmen, right? Um, uh, a road. Yeah, and and they were trying to build this bridge, and this uh, this um, h highway, and every time they they, I mean they couldn't finish it, you know. It falls down, or or uh, the machi the machines uh, uh, break down, or, or I don't know something happened, but they couldn't finish this this uh side of the driveway so the people around got uh, uh they speak to the to the um i don't know the engineer or something like that and they told them that this was a luscious territory and if they were going through their homes they needed to make a new home for them So this was intended to be a driveway, and after they hear that, they make they made a bridge, and under the bridge they make this like pyramid, and the little home, and they made they this thing they they put flowers and corn and they offered a night and and after that, they got no issue anymore. And this happened like I think they tried to build. I think it was like uh, one side of the bridge, like a like a what do they call this pylons or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was they just every time it would either fall apart, the equipment would fail. I think it was like four separate occasions, and they finally pulled in somebody from the area and said this. So they put up like a little shrine. I've seen this. It's on the right yes, side. Yes, well, if you look at the. It's on the right side. It's huge too. It's not a little. No, shrine. it's, it's, it's very large. big. It's very big. Yes, because because actually the driveway is, is it's quite big. So if you go, uh, like under the bridge, you can see this thing that is really, really huge. Interesting thing, a few months ago, uh, there's this, uh, like the this the Majan train they are building now. Yes. Yeah. So they uh demolished the thing, 
and they start making as excavations over is okay so they start uh working over and they just demolish this thing and it started like two months ago i guess they they can't finish that part again and the people working there now that doesn't believe what happened uh back there they are now seeing things and they've seen shadows over what oh, they are walking in, at night because they are overtime into this uh thing and in the night there is actually a picture over uh, on the internet where this worker is like into the this hole they have dug and over that there is like this black shadow very creepy black shadow like looking at him directly and he took that picture yes i've seen that picture it was like in a tree wasn't it uh, yes looking and, down and kind of you need to like like take a very good look to 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 see this figure but when you see it it's there wow so now they are fighting again with the same thing and uh, well, I told I, I I bring this up because maybe in in I mean you got a a, a very big uh, um piece of 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 uh well where you live, so maybe uh, you will need to get someone that that really that's really into like like this. And make something like that. I don't know. Maybe build something or so offer. Like some we're gonna have to build another shrine. Or maybe something, yes. or uh, offer something to them or something like that. I don't know. I, I've heard a lot of offerings. You know, add, add, add you know, give them offerings. Is, That's right. Is one of the things. And and Moses, un, un, unfortunately, we're coming to we're coming to the end of this. Uh, we could keep talking. Are you interested in keep talking a little bit more? <laughs> yes, yeah, if you want to. Yes, we do. We do. So what we're going to do is we're going to end this uh, end this here and bring this episode to an end. And we're going to do like what's called an extended episode. So for all our listeners out there, this is going to be an extended episode. We're going to go a little bit longer with Moses here because these stories are incredible. Uh, terrifying at the same time. Uh -huh. And happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Moses, hang on there. Uh, we're just going to and I hope everybody's enjoyed this so far and stay tuned for more. Sounds great. See you in a minute. All right. I want to thank Moises for being on the Lost Frequency podcast. That was many different uh, categories. I would say like terrifying, um, the beginning, and then intriguing and super in-depth and interesting. Yeah, and definitely uh, culturally um, enlightening because Ryan and I are from a completely different culture. I mean, I would say that Canadian culture and American culture are very similar. In they have a lot ways, of similarities, but, but differences Mexican culture well. is its own thing. Yeah, And we really wanted that perspective and we really wanted you guys to hear that perspective. And uh, like I said, I ran across him at a party and I just kind of mentioned that I do a podcast and he just started dropping these, dropping these bombs on me. And I was like, okay, your English is good enough, great enough actually yep. to, <laughs> it's his job <laughs> to come on and share some of this with us. And he was like, absolutely. And uh, wow, the I first story with him half between dream and half between awake i love that what did you what did you think about that you know what it, it brought me back to um the dreamscape alchemist with uh with neil uh it really started having these like flashbacks of neil a little, a little bit but completely different uh avenues on it you know where it was he was in between the worlds right and, and that was so his girlfriend was shaking him freaking out and, and, he, could, and he could see that <laughs> yeah but he could also see this thing putting his hands, hands into his mouth and he felt like it was going to go inside of like him that was its intention, intention was to enter wow that's something like like the matrix where the, where neo jumps into the the, the agent smith and oh, blows him up at the end yeah that might be some type of a predictive programming oh never even thought about that yeah yeah and then he went into uh and this and this creature was large he oh, said I'm sorry you know, yeah mm -hmm. two and a half meters it, but you know we said two and a half and he, he said, said larger he said yeah, so we're saying three well, the meters ceilings maybe. here are two and a half meters so what were we thinking yeah. it may be three well and it, half it all depends on some of them yeah but yeah it could be three three and a half meters yeah, and buildings, yeah. we're i'm thinking i'm thinking rake 
you yeah. know, some sort of rape creature. Something. I, I really enjoyed the way how he just how he described he that, it. Yeah, Stepping he said into the skin the room. was. Yes, he he totally had this great description. He says the skin was this grayish skin too. And it was mimicking his brother's voice. I've never heard creepy. anything like that. Creepy. And I was just like blown away by that. And, and, then, and that's and that's why this this episode is included in our October run because yeah, you know, oh yeah, I don't know we're, we should give it a quick name as the the frequency freakout month. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we, we'll, come the, we'll come up with something. We'll come up with something. Came off the top of the dome, but uh, yeah, and then he went into the uh, uh, the dream almost or like when the he, esoteric when, almost or, or what do you when he when he woke up. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The shadow being at the edge of his bed, oh, looking in the bed. other direction. Yeah, and him possibly being being open because of his connection with some group of people that. But you did know these what, things. You know, at first it was kind of scary, but then he gets into the point. Like when he said was just sitting there looking out the window, I was like, okay, that's not really that scary. But then he jumps in, and I'm not saying it's scary, but then he kind of says, well, it kind of reminded him of his grandpa who passed away in this house, and it's like, aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. very cool very, very cool that he was and i think the question i said was quite silly how do you know it was facing away from you he goes because <laughs> it was sitting on the bed facing sitting away with his feet on the ground it's not, it's not like people <laughs> fold that way uh, maybe but but if they're if they're from another dimension or whatever why not tom i think actually why if not? they can fold that way then it was a good question yeah and, and, <laughs> put your seat back forward <laughs> and then he went into like the <laughs> jesus <laughs> And then we went into like the esoteric and the ancient civilizations and giants. No, no, no. That was the, oh, oh that, that's Ooh. a wasn't that a? Uh, was it? Yes, yes. Actually, yeah. He kind of he mentioned kind of he mentioned on. giants. And then we went into that a little further in our Beyond the Periphery extended uh, extended episode. So, yes. so if you're listening to this and you really enjoyed the you know the la- latter half of this interview, then there's more to come in our Beyond the Periphery yeah, because we've seen that he obviously had more than the bank in the bank to talk about and i just wanted to get some of his uh perspectives on things and uh boy he, he uh he said some things that um definitely intrigued me and he's got more and he's uh, got more that that's that that was the crazy thing is that he wants to you know he, he wants to come into the studio when we have the studio and he's like i'm gonna bring books you know to back up what he's talking about but yeah, again that, that is, is in that that though that information can be found in this beyond the periphery exactly and uh once again um uh, linda and all my frequentots over there on the facebook page you guys susan are, Su- yeah. susan oh wow she, she's always bringing very good information and interesting things to talk about yeah and uh yeah you guys have been blowing it up over there um we've tried we've i've me and rye have made a concerted effort to make sure that we stay in contact with 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 each and every one of you because each and every one of you are are, you know are making this podcast you know we are delivering it but you are listening and we really appreciate our listeners we get a lot of feedback we get a lot of feedback from you guys and we get a lot of stories and we get a lot of uh, a lot of people who you know have enough information or enough about a story to come on don't think any of that goes unnoticed you know we tom and i talk about that regularly we're like wow did you see this comment you know one of us might reply but both of us are watching you know so oh we, yeah we love it we have it's also very about back you know, and forth. It was, yes i'm sorry you know it's very interesting too like if i have a lead i guess we call it a lead i like hey dude i got this person hey blah 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 and you're like don't tell me don't tell me just tell me kind of like what it's about yes and, exactly. and he does the same thing to me and we don't want to know too much about it because the way we experience in our natural reaction is the way we want you guys to experience it too. So we're like doing it together. Yeah. And uh, speaking of stories, you can send us your stories uh, via Facebook at Tom Franklin or Rye Voss, or once again at our Gmail uh, uh, Gmail address, which is the Lost Frequency Podcast at Gmail dot com. Or you or... can actually send it. Uh, you know, if you are sending it to those ones and you want it, uh, you want it to be read on our um, Frequenauts Unveiled. You know, make sure you do that hashtag Freakonauts Unveiled so we know that this is what you want it for, you know, so we can do that in YouTube and yeah, have keep, a reaction keep, to that. Keep an eye on YouTube because it's uh, we're going to we're going to delve a little bit more into it because you guys seem to like what we do and we like doing what we do. So uh, we yeah, really do, man. Yeah, we do. It's it, it, this is this is going really, really good. I, I'm I, I'm loving this and I hope you guys are loving it, too. Now, you know, it, it, he we talked about some ancient civilizations, ancient history and you know, about this, uh, um, Atlanteans, you know, he mentioned a civilization possibly before. Oh, of course. Do you know what, uh, possibly what that one is, what they call uh, it? No, not the name of it. Lumeria. 
So Lemurians. That was the That's one that really, was the precursor so to the Atlanteans. Name, the name of my band was Lamera. Ah, uh-huh, see? see? There we there, go. There, see, look, there, there's another synchronicity. Exactly. Once again. So the Lem- Lemurians then led to the Atlanteans. And he kind of... So, and, and, and if we're going with Graham Hancock, what happened to the Atlanteans was like a, a great, uh, you know, flood or, or catastrophe that, that, that fell off. And this is super interesting, you know, and we kind of tied into it about how this information started spreading around around the world. So it's super, I, I, I'm so intrigued into it. So if any of our listeners have studied this, studied any of this you know oh, i want to hear from you a little call to action there right yeah exactly you know i'm i'm extremely interested in it so bring it on down and and, and send me send me an email send us an email story bringer come on down you're, you're the, the next, next contestant, contestant on the lost frequency <laughs> i will take a bigfoot uh story for one dollar oh no or, or, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I thought I thought you were going with Jeopardy on that one. You know, I'll, I'll take uh, this uh, Bigfoot stories for three hundred, Alex. It is hairy and smells and scares what the, is the crap out of people. Tom, mm, <laughs> oh. ooh. that was a jab and an uppercut, right? You know, I'm, I will talk to you later after this episode. <laughs> we really appreciate you guys. We love you guys very much. You guys have been killing it for us, and uh, we're going to keep killing it for you and bringing you quality content. And please remember, you're listening to the Lost Frequency Podcast, where we bring the periphery. In the focus. We close with good night, good luck, and God bless all of you, all of you on the good earth.